All right, what's going on everybody? This is Tim O'Dell with O'Dell Complete Concrete. Here we are on a new project. It's gonna be a patio cover project. We're gonna be doing a 12 by 14 patio cover, a solid top, four recessed lights, and uh, we're gonna take you along on the whole process. So here is the area we're going to be installing this freestanding patio cover and what's nice about doing this job on these or in these this paver area is the fact that it's not going to look like we ever disturbed this patio. Basically what all we're going to do and here's the benefit of having pavers over concrete is we're able to take those pavers out, dig some holes, concrete our, our patio cover posts in and then put the pavers back and make it look seamless like it was never an afterthought. Another thing we are thinking about before we do install this padded cover is we want to make sure the padded cover is higher than the kitchen window you can see in the back next to the sliding glass door. So this padded cover is going to be about 10 feet tall. Okay, so we're just getting layout set up right now for the patio cover. It's a 14 by 12 patio cover. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna go one foot in on each side. So we're really gonna be marking out for a 10 by 12 so that we have perfect corners for our post. Um, right now what I did to get square with the house is I just measured off the foundation. Um, I'm going about five feet, eight inches off the foundation of the house. This right here, get close up. The tape and I'm pretty straight with the house right here. We got about 5'8. You can see that. About 5'8. Then I did the same thing over here. I also measured the distance. I'm going about, like I said, 12 feet for my post. So I'm going to have a one foot over eight on each side. And then I'm just extending my line a little bit past. And here we are, another 5.8. So we're gonna snap a chalk line now, get our straight line, and then work off that straight line. Let's get to it. So once I do have my parallel line snapped out with the foundation of the house, I'm just gonna start squaring up from that initial line. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna measure off that initial line 12 feet because the length of the paddock cover is 14 and then I am going to do the Pythagorean theorem to get a perfect square for the paddock cover. After that is all done, I am also measuring from corner to corner to make sure that I have the exact same measurement so I know that this is a square patio. After I do have my lines all snapped out, I'm just going to run some string lines because once we do start taking out the pavers, you know, it's going to be taken out the lines that we snapped. So we're going to run some string lines right above our lines, making sure that they're right on so I don't have to recheck everything. Another good thing to keep in mind though is make sure you run your string lines past your initial marks of where the corner of the post are going to go because you're going to need some room to dig. Oh, and just in case you guys were wondering where we're getting our electrical from, there was an outlet right next to the sliding glass door, and all we're doing is digging right under the concrete border of the pavers that pretty much are locking in the pavers and ran a conduit right under that uh, concrete border. And then we're gonna be running that electrical straight up the post that we do install.
so this is what I was talking about earlier. What's nice about this being a paver patio is that we're able to put all these pavers back and make it look like this was never an afterthought and that the patio or paver patio was undisturbed. See, if this was concrete, we'd have, we would have had to cut out squares on the concrete patio, patch it in, and it just would have been obvious and noticeable that this patio cover was an afterthought. But since these are pavers, it's not going to look like that at all. Of course, the pavers, though, if you really look at the pattern, they're not going to go exactly back how the original pattern was because the posts do throw off the paver pattern. But no one's going to look that close and really notice that. So now that the powder cover posts are all set up, though, what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be measuring from the pavers all the way up on our powder cover posts about 10 feet because that is the desired height we're looking for. Once that is done, we're actually using a header beam just to measure across and mark our powder, covers, powder cover post level, except for the ones that are closest to us because those posts are going to be cut a little bit shorter than 10 feet so that we do have about 1% slope because we will be putting a gutter system that's going to drain out towards the turf. Once all of the posts have been cut, the next thing we're going to be placing is our cover plates. And these are the cover plates that go over the posts to give the posts a nice aesthetic look. And we just measure and cut them to the right height. So right here what you're looking at is a our metal header beam that's going to be inserted inside of our header beams. It's basically going to be giving the padded cover some extra structure and support. The main purpose of these are to basically eliminate extra posts so that you can have a longer running paddy cover. Alright, so right now we're just going to be putting these uh, header steel plate uh, beams into the headers for our patio cover. It's going to make it that much stronger. Want to make sure that the header is evenly divided the steel plate is evenly divided within the header so that we can attach to the post right there I need a little bit more can you push uh, push them down for me jimmy Okay, so now that the steel plate is in our header beam, we're gonna measure these posts center to center. Once we know our measurement, um, we're gonna transfer that to our header beam, put some holes in it, and bring it up, screw it right into our post. So we just bored out some holes in the front of the header beam, and those are gonna get capped later with some little buttons that fit in right into those holes. But we're leaving those open so that we can screw through the header into the post. Oh, a bit. Uh, a bit. And so now that we have the first two up. We're just going to do that for the rest of them and then move to our side place and start getting those in.
right, so I just want to show you guys really quick how we wired up the switch. Here we are. We have a black with black. We have our other hot run to our other hot line, which is going to be our switches above. We have all of our ground together. And then this will be for, uh, let's say, fans or um, like a two-way switch. And then we have our neutrals capped off together. So that's how you wire up uh, the electrical for a one-way switch. One-way dimmer switch. So we're going to put this all in. Make it all fit nice and snug in there. Make sure that's all good in there. And then just close it all up. And that'll do it. That'll do it for this little guy. A lot of wire for one little switch. So we have everything mapped out. We got holes on where we're gonna be needing all the lights exactly. So it's gonna be two rows that go straight down this way. We got two pop-ups. We're gonna to fish the wire right now through here all the way down to Jimmy's side down there and he's gonna pull the wire up through there. So we gotta we got do this carefully though, not to uh, cut the wires because this is aluminum and it's short. Okay, so we got that wire fed through. Now I just gotta fish hook that one up and through here with my little fisher. And hook it, pull it through. Okay, now I got it through. Now I'm just gonna uh, make sure this is nicely tied up so that it won't fall back through the hole. We'll just uh, start laying some panels until we get to uh, the electrical areas. So here we are installing the panels and what's nice about these little panels is that they have hooks on them that basically hook onto the next one almost like self locking and all you have to do really is just put a screw in on each end into the header beams and you're set all done from that on the panels. We do usually just have one guy laying out the panels on the side of the patio cover so that we can just drag them up into place okay so we're putting the lights in right now for the patio cover here's what they come with a little mounting bracket a couple of uh, screws in here to utilize some wire nuts and I like to keep a self tapping screw on me because it is very hard to get these flat screws that they come with in let me show you so this is what they come with, and that's very difficult to get that through the aluminum. So we like to use these self-tappers first, and then switch it for this. The only reason why we have to use this one, uh, Jimmy, pass me the light. The only reason why we have to use these uh, these ones, these little screws, is because of the head. The head is the perfect fit for uh, these lights. So basically, we screw it through this right here. And then we twist it, mount it this way, and then it locks in like that. With the other heads I have, they're too big to actually twist and lock in place. Got it, Jimmy? Yeah. Went through. Are we in? Yep. Sweet. Tell me when. He's gone. It's in. Okay. Do one at a time. So, like I was saying, we're taking the self tappers out. And then we're going to put these in right here. Mainly because of the junction box that we have up top. These screws are a little bit shorter. You can see If you can see that. These have a little bit more bite to the junction box that we're putting up top for our recessed lights. That's the whole reason why we're using these. And like I said, they do mount, they fit better with the mounting system that comes with these uh, lights. Okay, here comes one. Am I 
end, Jimmy? Yep. Okay, disconnecting the next one. Pass me a, a, a screw up top from the baggie. Man, Shane, you're gonna be like a dedicated cameraman. Yeah. Sweet. Okay, ready? Okay, nope. keep, keep it steady. They're in. Okay. Okay, so now that they're in, if you notice, I don't have them screwed in all the way. See how loose that is? And the reason is, I'm gonna show you right now why. Okay, so do you see what I was saying guys earlier? These screw heads are the perfect fit for these uh, light fixtures. So I'll get them in, right? And I just twist them. Now, do you see how they twist it into the spot where it's a smaller opening? Now that that's done, all I'm gonna do is finish tightening them up. Jimmy, how does it look up top? Good. You don't wanna go too tight though, because if you go too tight, you're gonna go right through uh, your lighting. And then uh, there will be nothing to bite on, and you're not gonna have a good day after that. Okay, give me the, here's the cover plate. Cover plates have three little uh, locking uh, lock areas for the cover plate or the light. So I'm just gonna line that up and twist it on and it's done. And it's that easy. All right, now we're just gonna go up top and wire everything up. So here it gives you a little bit of a better view of how the panels are installed as we go down. You can also see how we do set up our electrical. Like I said, we basically just screwed the panels right into the header. And since it is a double header, we're putting uh, two screws in on each side of the pans. Right now we're just going to be getting ready for the gutter system as well but uh the pieces they give you are a little long so you do need to cut them somewhat to fit to uh your pattern cover size they give you a little bit extra just in case if anything was off or anything like that but um so we're gonna make this cut right now and uh get the gutter system up Okay, gutter piece is cut. We cut the front fascia of the gutter. Now we're just gonna be using our screws right through the gutter to our fascia board in the front. That's gonna be uh, what's gonna be holding all the rafter tails up. And then after that, we're gonna uh, hang it up on the patio cover. Okay, so it's important that we make sure that, come over here, Shane. It's really important that the gutter is flushed up against our front fascia so that when we do put the side plates on it'll butt up right against that and cover all this and not be sticking or poking out in any way that'll make more sense once we actually get to the part so i also want to keep my screws high because down here is where the water is going to be accumulating right down in this little pocket Yeah. All right, now that the gutter system and the fascia of the paddle cover is all attached, now we're just bringing it up to our pans, which are the, the panels, and attaching it to the panels. So here's the gutter system right here. You stuff some styrofoam in there that the, uh, the patio factory uh, kit comes with and then you caulk the edges and that'll keep it from leaking out the sides of the gutter plate. Because eventually we're gonna put a hole right about here and follow it down the side plate and it'll drain right into the turf. So that's a little tip 
if you didn't know if you've never done these before don't forget to put your styrofoam in before you put your side plates up because you will have a hard time cocking it later so we are about done with this powder cover the last few things that we're going to be doing is installing the side fascias that attach to the channel hangers on the side and then we will be attaching the rafter tails which attach to the front fascia okay so we're just getting our rafter tails set up now for our front fascia we got scalp tails going up and I'm just going to show you really quick on how we do the math for this so we have basically eight rafter tails in total going up on this padded cover including the side fascia as you can see up there that one there's gonna be one more on that end but uh we just kind of wanted to get the idea of our spacing and what it came down to was let me show you all the math calculator real quick so it's 14 feet in total from uh side fascia to side fascia the front hole for, uh, rafter or fascia um there's six rafter tails we have laid out right so you divide that by six you get two feet four inches which is 2.333 next what we have to do is just evenly space the ends so we just divide that by two so our spacing would be one foot two inches because 1.6 is uh two inches so on the ends we just space uh our rafter tails one foot two inches away from each end and that gives us two point or that gives us two feet four inches uh space gap counted for and then every other rafter tail after that will be spaced at two feet four inches and that will give us everything uh properly divided up by two feet four inches and everything will look good so what we're gonna do is we get our side uh fascia up first and then we're gonna go ahead and get all the rafter tails installed hopefully that makes sense if not go ahead and comment or if you got a better method let me know So now that our rafter tails are all installed, the last little thing we did for this powder cover was installed some uh, cover shades for the front and the side just to reduce the sun in this powder cover area because it does get hit by sun all day long. But this is the final result. You can also see uh, we do have the gutter system installed as well. Didn't get any good close ups on that, but you can see it's actually draining water out. We did want to test it before we left the job. <laughs> made sure that there's no leaks in this powder cover but yeah that is it for this powder cover install i hope you guys did enjoy this video hope you guys learned something make sure you guys do like share subscribe and comment any questions you may have on this build and stay tuned for more odell complete concrete videos thank you and have a great day guys Peace.